Today we are going to be talking about organized crime in Hawaii. It's been a hot topic lately, and especially with all the things that have come to light in the last year with Mike Miski and all that stuff. There's a huge demand right now in the knowledge and understanding of the history of organized crime in Hawaii. We're going to get into that in the next 24 hours with the Sunny Sky Shady Character. So if you want to get into this book with us talking about corruption in Hawaii and organized crime in Hawaii, head on over to the Patreon, sign up, and any amount doesn't really matter. What's up, Tasha? And um, we're going we're gonna to start tomorrow. So I'm going to release a video just for my Patreon subscribers. And I'm going to give a history and a background of organized crime in Hawaii to prepare you for this book. Sub Josiah Enos. I'm good friends with some Enos and the Enos family. From Kahalu. Loti808. Yes, I let them know my brother. Rob Wed Wedger. What's up? What's up, Rob? Tafi Sao. What's up, bro? So tomorrow we're starting the book. So if you want to get on that, go over to Patreon, make that happen. Um, today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about organized crime, the history of organized crime. I'm not going to do a comprehensive review of organized crime. This is going to be more like a primer. I'm going to skim over a lot of stuff. I'm just going to give a basic background. For a lot of you, I think we're at like 30 people that are going through the book with me on Patreon. That starts tomorrow at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. So I don't know what that is in Vegas. I'm guessing three hours back. So it'd be like 8 p.m. Vegas time. I know I got plenty of people out in Vegas. It's going to be interesting for you guys because Hawaii organized crime is so tied in with Vegas organized crime. Um, I've been preparing for this for a long time. I've been doing a lot of research. There's a lot of stuff to find out out there. But most interesting to me is you can still go back and look at the newspaper clippings almost in real time of how things played out. There were so many murders and there's such a deep story to organized crime in Hawaii. And having known so much about Hawaii and knowing where all these places are, for me, I can walk down the street in my head and see the buildings and see the houses where these people were, where they were murdered, where they were hustling, where they got arrested. It's insane. So I was thinking, when all this COVID stuff stops, we were planning on making a trip to Hawaii. We were going to do a meet and greet so I can meet all you guys that have been supporting the channel, talk to all you guys, and just everybody get together in Hui. And I was thinking, you know what? We should do a tour. We should put together a tour where we get a group of us together and we drive around. In some places we can walk around and visit all the places that are involved in both the book we're about to read tomorrow, but also like my hunting grounds where I used to go hunt for criminals. I can show you all the spots where stories that I've told on the podcast happened. I can show you real time. This is where he ran to. This is when the bank that he robbed. Here's where we caught him. Here's where the guy jumped off the building. Things like that. So there's a lot of stuff in the works for the future. Um, if you have any ideas on how that might work, go ahead and shoot them in my DMs. You can email me, Doug, at DougKranick.com. You can hit me up on my Patreon if you're a supporter. You can hit me up in Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, whatever works best for you. There's no DM feature here on YouTube. And even though you could put it in the comments, there's so many comments that it's hard for me to be able to catalog, um, catalog those and save them. So it's better if you got them in the email. Nalo Tulanai says, I can't wait to start the book tomorrow. Me either. What's up, Sin City? 808, Manny Soria, Tasha K. What's up, guys? PJ Tanag. Thanks for coming through, bro. Thank you for all the support. I don't forget about your gift yesterday. Manny Soria, you coming to Kona? I have a good friend in Kona. So I was thinking about coming to Kona. 
Everybody, most people know on my channel that my favorite place in the world is come well on the big island. Waimea. It's God's country right there. And actually, there's a lot of parts of this story that we're going to get into that involve Waimea. So, and I'm pretty sure Larry Mayhaw um, was in Waimea when he died. I think he lived in Waimea. I think after he retired, he moved out to Kamuela. And then, uh, but between Waimea and Honoka'a, any place where there's like cowboys and horses and cattle, the rolling hills, like, it's like Little House on the Prairie, but in Hawaii. I went there once. I didn't tell this story many times, but I did apply for the Big Island Police Department. And I got rejected. There was a captain that was in charge of human resources at the time. For whatever reason, she wasn't easy to hire, get hired by. Which is crazy because most people from the Honolulu Police Department can go to any of the islands because the training is so good in comparison. And then those outer islands don't have to train the officer. So doing that lateral transfer is easy. But there were things in my background that, that were unacceptable to them. Remember, if any of you watched my podcast um, episode two, where I discussed the process of me becoming a police officer in Honolulu, I got in by the skin of my teeth because I had a crazy childhood. And didn't think I was going to make it, but did make it. They took a chance and it paid off. And I loved my job and I was a good cop. And so I had been able to prove that I could do this job. But for whatever reason, Big Island, they had certain things that didn't work out. All I did was take all the information from the packet that I'd filled out for HPD and wrote the same stuff on the packet for Big Island. I was going to try to transfer to Big Island. I wanted to retire out there, move my family out there and just retire. You know what I mean? By retire, I mean go to work Big Island and not have all the action like in Honolulu. And uh, for whatever reason, it didn't work out. God had other plans, apparently. But man, I was I was determined. And I thought about going Maui. I was trying to get away from like the chronic action. I was trying to get away from the city. Because, you know, I worked in the city and it was like all the time, just like, chronics and criminals and all that stuff and it was exciting but like when I got off work I was remember I was living in Kalihi at the time I was living in the armpit of Kalihi I was living in Rose Street right across from KPT Lino Puni right across from Lino Puni and uh, right off Middle Street right by Fern Elementary right by the um, get the, to the Tongan grocery store at the corner and I was living it there at the time. And I was like, you know what? I'm living in the city, working in the city. Maybe I want to try some country action. So I wanted to get out there bad, but couldn't do it. One of my friends went out there and made it. And loved it. I was saying, yo, it's great out here. And he was working Kona. And he, and he lives with man, but he drives to Kona for work. So I'm definitely going to come out to Waimea. Definitely going to come out to Kona. And you guys all know my big homie Jensen. He's got family in Hilo. And um, so I'm definitely going to come out there. So just some housekeeping. I want to give a shout out to all my patrons. Um, I'm just, I've been overwhelmed. You guys are amazing. The support's been incredible. Michelle, Tamara, Kanoi, Pamela, Brittany, Luana, Grant, Shiloh, Nans, Leigh, Bobby, Christina, Jensen, Marissa, Mary, Cynthia, Marissa A., Pam Chang, Link, DK, Kai, Tyra, Kim, Bredge, Whitney G, and Daniel D. And um, I got a few more that I haven't thrown out there yet. I didn't update this yet. But you guys are the best, man. Shout out to you guys. The chat's been awesome. You guys look all hyped, ready to go. So thank you guys. And I'm going to give some shouts out here for everybody in the chat. Oh, dang. Sorry, I was neglecting this. Bilbo Mama. Yeah, finally I catch you live. Thanks for coming through. Todd Atkins. What's up, Todd? Karina Spencer. Maybe one of my favorite people in the whole world. How you doing, Auntie? Thanks.
thank you guys for coming through. And then on, on YouTube, Kalea 808. Love that name. It's my daughter's name. Aloha, Doug. Get one book left at Barnes & Noble, Ala Moana. Whoever needs, you can reserve it too via their website. Go get them, guys. Listen, if you don't get the book in time, it's all G. You're still going to get the link to the video. You can watch a video when the book comes in. You can still connect with me because remember this first week, we haven't read the book yet. We don't start reading the book till after the video tomorrow. So if you didn't get your book yet, no worries. Still log on. Still um, go into Patreon. You'll get your link. It'll take you to YouTube. Watch the video with us. It'll be a live just like this. It's going to stream just like this. And we'll talk about the history of organized crime so I can give you a primer. I can give you more details so you know what to think going into reading this book. So, so more things will make sense. That's what I've been working on all this research. So I can give you kind of a background on organized crime so you know the names right away. Some of you know them already. If you live in Hawaii, you probably already know most of the names. But then there's some stories that you might not have heard already. I'm talking. I'm getting into stories. Check this out. There's this one dude. He got murdered. There's a whole story about how he got murdered. But he got murdered. Up Nu'uanu Poli. You know Nu'uanu Poli Drive. Um, what was his name? Moses Hui Hui. Not Henry Hui Hui, but Moses Hui Hui. Check this out. January 5th, 1968. I'm sorry. Yeah, January 5th, 1968. 26-year-old Moses Hui Hui was shot. His body was dumped on Nuuanu Poli Drive. Just Malka of Morgan's Corner. You guys know Morgan's Corner. It's that hairpin turn off the Nuuanu Poli. So when you take the Nuuanu Poli off, get that one hairpin turn. By Morgan's Corner. About 25 feet from Morgan's Corner, right by that Judd Trail. You guys know Judd Trail. There, if you go look at go look at MapQuest on New Orleans Pulley Drive, there'll be Judd Trail that kind of just walks off. You see there's a little sign even. I don't know if the sign's there right now, but it was when I left. It had a sign that said Judd Trail and people hike them. Um, the body was found 25 feet down the embankment. The people who had killed him had thrown the body out of the car and it rolled 25 feet down the embankment. It was found right near the Judd Trail. Um, Moses Hui Hui was a taxi driver with Trade Winds Taxis. That's still a taxi company in Hawaii, but I think they have Big Island now. But Trade Winds Taxi was the name of the taxi company. He was a contractor for them. He had his own taxi and he would contract rides. They're still in existence. Big Island, some of my Big Island peeps. It's called Trade Winds <clears throat> um, Taxi Service. I don't know how taxis are doing right now. I know with like, you know, Uber and all those new companies, I don't know how they're doing, but they were as of a few years ago. And then his car was found at the Holiday Mart. You know the one in town off Kaheka by Daie, um, by Don Quixote. It used to be called Holiday Mart. His car was found on Ahana Street just by the um, Holiday Mart his taxi was found. He had said goodbye to his wife. He dropped her off at home and said, I'm going to go to a card game. He was a gambler. And he went to the card game and then never, no one ever saw him again. They found his car. There's a hundred stories like this. This one is connected to a bunch of different stories. There's a reason why the people didn't like him. The, there's a reason why the people didn't like him that killed him. And then because of this murder, other things happened. This was one of the dozens of murders that happened due to the organized crime that happened because of the company or the Hawaiian syndicate. So we're just going to get into all these things. There's so much to it, it would last years to get into it. No joke. Straight up, it would, it would take a long time. But we're going, I'm going to give you like a primer and we're going to go over those kind of things, especially in the video tomorrow. So if you don't have the book, no worries. We're just going to go through. I'm going to give you an overall overview we're only reading two chapters the first week, so you'll know what to expect. I'll tell you what mindset to have yourself in when you read it, what to expect, and if there's any difficulties or things to watch out for. And then um, the next week on Monday, same time, we'll talk about the first two chapters. Talk about, a lot of people will be like, hey, I know that family, or yeah, I remember when that happened. 
um, I was a little girl or my mom told me about what happened. This is what I had heard, blah, 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 blah. So it'll be cool for everybody to talk about it and see how everybody relates. So, H. Aki, sub dog. I live in Waimea. Aloha, bro. Aloha, man. Thanks for coming through all the way from Waimea, God's country. God, I love that place. Sin City said, damn, my fave island too. Tasha K. Said, did you see the recent coverage of the gangsters in the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department? It was eye-opening of what's going on in the Sheriff's Office. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Um, I will say that I did find out today that there's another YouTube channel that just announced they're going to go through. They started a book club. And they're going to go through this book. And it starts on Wednesday. Man, I didn't know what to think about that one. But, is what it is. I hope they have fun. hope they learn a lot. It's a good book to read. I recently connected with Jim Dooley. The author of this book. One of my Patreon supporters. Knew him. Used to work with him. At the Advertiser. Heard about what I was doing, reached out and said, hey, I used to know him. And I said, you know what, could you please put me in, c connect with him? Like, I, I reached out to him and I wasn't getting anything. It was really hard to find him. And she said, you know, I'll reach out and see. And so I did put out the feelers. I, t I sent him a long email saying, hey, here's what I'm doing. A lot of people interested. I'd love to have you on the podcast. Love you have, have you on my YouTube channel. And, um, you know, if I'd like to sell your book. So that people don't have to go on on Amazon. Maybe I could get some kind of a deal for you guys. And um, I waited a couple days and he finally reached out. And he was gracious and he was kind. But he said he's going through a lot right now. There's some stuff going on in the family. So he's going to pass on getting involved in the YouTube channel and on the podcast. So I just realized my mic wasn't in the way. Could you guys hear me? Dang. Um, so he, he passed on getting involved. So I wish him all the best. I hope everything works out for him and his family, whatever's going on. I'll be praying for the guy and, um, maybe in the future, but I know he's probably got a lot going on. T and PJ two eight said, what time uncle, what time is going to be, um, tomorrow. So Monday night. 6 p.m. That's 1,800 hours Hawaii time. Shannon Morocco. One of my favorite people in the whole world. Love you. Thanks for coming through. Um, where can you buy the book? Trainer Kamanu. There's a link in the description of all my videos. Click on my link tree. There is a link to the Amazon. You can also go Barnes & Noble. The one a la Moana if you want to just go buy it. They have one left. You can, you can go online and reserve them, but there's only one left. There's a bunch on the Amazon where you can go grab them. And Craig Shatigny. Aloha from Florida, former D4 Ohana here. Love the stories. Shatigny. Why do I know that name? No ways. How long you been out in in Florida? And do you work with... um? You work with uh, any other HPD out there? I don't want to put his name on blast, but I know a good dude that moved out there. Hope you're being safe out there, Craig. Thanks for coming through, bro. What a small world. You're in Florida, former HPD. And then Z Tago Vailoa. Z Tago Vailoa. What's up, brother? Hey, what's up, Z? Thanks for coming through. 701, you must have moved away. Get some Aloha Kind Grinds. What's up? If you guys remember, get some Aloha Kind Grinds on um, TikTok. And I believe on, it might be on YouTube. No, it's on Instagram. They got awesome food. Go check them out if you in the Pacific Northwest. Hawaiian food. Shaw Knowles. What's up, Shaw? Thanks for the shaka. All right, I think I caught up with everybody on TikTok. Okay, um, let me see if I can get some of these comments. No, I didn't know anything about the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department. 
I'll look into that now though. I might be a little busy for the next few weeks with the books, the book club, but I'll still be doing um, videos for the public on my YouTube channel. Um, it just won't have anything to do with the book because I know plenty of people don't, there's probably most people don't want to hear about the book. So that's why we're going to do it on the channel. Tasha K said, I have a hunter that worked for Hilo, Hilo PD. Right on. Hope they stay safe. Kai Lyons, what's up, bro? Why ya? Oh, just got on now. Hooray. Big Island. God's country. Thanks for coming through. Why ya? Oh. And Rob Wedger, I have friends with Maui. I got a couple friends in Maui too. Good friend of mine. She's a partner. She was one of the ones that was in my unit during the heyday, during like the best time of my career. She went to Maui. She's having fun out there. Her family lives out there. Matt Kapu, sup, Doug? What's up, Matt? Thanks for coming through. Chrissy Leo, hi. Love that girl. Like a sister to me. Love you, Chrissy. Thanks for coming through. Steady Bark, 96720 with the double shaka. Miss Honu says, I made it. Aloha, Doug. Aloha, everyone. Television so show says, Aloha. What's up, guys? Straight out of Aloha with the shaka. Land and Power in Hawaii is a great book. Chapter 7, Organized Crime. Thank you for that recommendation. You all got it. Land and Power in Hawaii. Chapter 7 on Organized Crime. Maybe we'll go through one of those one day. Uh, Madman XXL67 said, You could get the books on Apple Books, too. So go and grab them if you can't go to the store. Jovan Lopez says, How's it, Dougie? What's up, Jovan? Flying Hawaiian, he says. How's it, my brother? What's up, man? Thanks for coming through. Pamela Perry. Aloha. What do you think about Rep Sharon Hard DUI driving wrong way down Baratani the other night? <sighs> yeah, man. Hey, it's not It's not like I haven't seen that before. And how many actors we arrested for driving the wrong way down the road, all drunk, all bust. It happens all the time. But if you saw that report, that was gnarly. So she's driving the wrong way down Baratania, which means she's heading Coco Headbound on Baratania. Can you imagine that? You're heading down Baratania. You're flying down Baratania, by the way. It's not a big road. Flying down Baratania. The wrong way. Coming head on at you as a car. And she had mixed some, like a barbiturate with some alcohol or whatever and was drunk. And then she's shouting Black Lives Matter when uh, it was time to arrest her. And if I'm not mistaken, she got out of her handcuffs. Do you guys, did you read the report, guys? If I'm not mistaken, this chick gets out of her handcuffs and shows the officer. Like, I don't know if she had the cuffs behind her back and she slipped them under her legs and had them cuffed together and was waving at the officer. I've seen that before, by the way. But the report said that she she waved her hands at the officer who then had to open the car and go to cuff her. And that's when she's yelling, Black Lives Matter, and didn't want to cooperate or whatever. So and then she blamed it on the meds. 808 said she blamed it on the meds she was taking. I've taken meds before, yeah? Never fought the cops. Never drove the wrong way on Baratania. Never screamed Black Lives Matter when I was drunk. Oh, gnarly though. John Wu says, Sup, Doug, how many watches are there? Different shifts for HPD. There are three watches in HPD. First, second, and third watch. First watch is from 2200 hours. That's 10 p.m. until 6 a.m. Second watch is 6 a.m. until 3 p.m., 2 p.m. And then uh, third watch is 1 p.m. until, what is it, 11, something like that. So they, they, they overlap by one hour so that there's this, it's called watch change. So when first watch, first watch has one hour left, Second watch is just getting on the road. So they pass each other. Their dudes are driving in while dudes are driving out. They try to do it so that the, the watch that's coming on to shift, they get out of the station first so there's no traffic. So usually line up is 15, 20 minutes. Sometimes it's cheaper than, it's uh, quicker than that. The lieutenant says, all right, everybody test your tasers. Everybody takes out the cartridge, tests the taser in the air, puts their tasers on. He says, everybody comes home safe. Hit the road. 
Everybody goes out, checks out their shotguns, their, their less lethal, their ARs. They check out their cars. They hit the road. And as soon as they hit the road, they log on the computer. The computer pops up. All the cases that are currently out on the road, they see that there's a case. Let's say I'm one Bravo. Let's say I'm one Bravo 176. So I'm a, I'm a blue car. So first watch Bravo 176. As soon as I test out, on the radio so the dispatcher knows I'm out and I'm available I look down at my computer and it shows that whoever was on third watch 176 the same beat so three three Bravo 176 oh I'm sorry it'd be one it would be um, yeah three Bravo 176 if he's on that case I'll go on the radio and said I'm gonna relieve 176 so I'll go to that case let him go in so he can check in his car and turn in his reports and whatever and I take over the case because now my shift works then we have something called fourth watch fourth watch is not island wide fourth watch is like a part of training essentially after everybody comes out off the their, their field training you know when they ride around with a cop like a veteran cop they hit what's called fourth watch where you don't have a supervisor with you like you don't have another cop watching you but you get a teammate like you get another officer who's with you from your class and you guys go out and you stir up and you stir up whatever's happening out there. Catch people doing stuff wrong. You'd be proactive. And then sometimes you help out on the watch. Like if they're slammed, if they're banging, like if it's going off, then fourth watch is taking cases. And that's how you learn to take your cases when you're in fourth watch. You're working out all the kinks, making your mistakes. That's called fourth watch. So when you're in town in Waikiki, which is mostly where fourth watch works because it's so busy, the watch loves it because normally you'd be taking these cases, but since you got new guys that have to learn, they cancel you, they go take your case for you. So I hope that answered the question, how many watches there are in shifts. Hawaiian Soul, what's up, Nans? She says, hi, Doug, just got here. Aloha, guys. Everybody give a shout out to Hawaiian Soul. She's always sweet. She's always been so nice to everybody. It's a good girl right there. Dennis DeLeon, aloha bro, aloha from Papa Kole. I love Papa Kole. I worked Papa Kole a long time. Um, I had a good officer who kind of taught me the ropes about Papa Kole. And um, I loved it up there. I used to spend all the time up Papa Kole, had that rec center, you know, that big recreation, recreation center, that outdoor basketball, all that. I used to hang out over there. Why ya oh said first watch the worst for me. I love first watch. First watch was the most fun, had the most action, and you mostly don't deal with normal people like all you lovely people. You mostly just deal with criminals. It's easier for a police officer just to deal with criminals because let's be honest, there's no We don't gotta go through the motions with them. They understand how we work. We understand how they work. So we don't got to jump through all these hoops. You just talk to them straight up. You don't got to be overly nice. 3 a.m. in Chinatown. He's walking out of a game room. He knows he's not doing right. You're not down there selling malasadas. You know what I mean? So... It's kind of nice to be honest with you and then when you got a young family it's great because the young family it's okay to be gone at nighttime and then you're there for them all day so like my wife had babies there was like I don't know the entire eight years seven years that we were there we had babies she kept having babies so I could be there during the day to help out never miss the swim practice never miss gymnastics Never miss soccer, never miss hula, never miss ballet, never missed surfing. We always played Waimanalo. We always went to Sherwoods. So it was great for a young family. And then my wife homeschooled the kids for that whole time because they were young. And then they went over to, um, what's the school they went to? They went to Myron B. Thompson Academy. Myron B. Thompson was like a co-op. And it's located 
right across the street from the Capitol. Right across the street from Ilani Palace. You know the YMCA building? That was Myron B. Thompson Academy. My kids went there the last year or two before we moved. So I could pick them up from school. And that was my district. That's where I worked. So I usually would have court at 8 a.m. So I could be there to drop them off on my way to court. And then they always come visit. So after we wait for an hour at court, when the judge sets the court time, we could go get lunch. Because remember, a lot of us, I worked all night. Got off at 6.45 and then had court at 8. So I couldn't even go home. So I'd go to court. We'd sit there until the judge said, yes, the court case is going to go, so stick around. And we'd all go out and get lunch. I always got bagels from that bagel spot. What was that bagel place called? Bagel place downtown off Hotel Street. Right right by that little water, right by the fountain. Man, I can't remember what that was. I can't remember what that was called. Anyway, hope that answered the question. I know you were. I know you bit off more than you could chew on that one. This is it. This is it. Remember the bagel place called This Is It. This is it bagels. They got one in Kakaako, and then there's one called This Is It Two. It's downtown at Alakea and Hotel, right on that little business strip. Dennis De Leon said, can you scan and drive by for stolen cars? Yes. They do have a machine, a scanner, that sits on the car. But not everyone has one, and they only have so many in the district. Traffic has them all, but as you drive by, it just scans all the cars. You just hear beep, 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 beep. And if it if it's stolen, the screen lights up red and says beep, 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 beep. Dispatch gets notification. She goes on the radio says... Can you confirm that license plate? You were probably driving, so you said, yeah, hold on, let me turn around. Let me go check it out. You turn around, you see the plate. It's either a parked car, and you're like, yeah, put me off on a stolen on a Code 10 recovery. I'm at this address, notify the RO. Then they notify the registered owner who comes down and picks it up. Or you pull up to the car and there's somebody in it. Books are sold out one and a half weeks at Barnes & Noble. Ryan Hiranaka, thanks for the info, bro. Appreciate you coming through. Kai Lyon says, how does the shifts work if you were crew? Crew has their own shifts. Patrol, that's the that's patrol. So the first, second, third watch is patrol. But all support units have their own shifts. So when I was on when I was a crew for the two months I was there, it was like I was undercover, so it was whenever. Whenever they were working, I would show up so I could work in the office. But those guys usually have like 9 p.m. Like there's a day crew and a night crew. The day crew is like 10 to 7 p.m., 10 a.m., 7 p.m. or whatever. Not exactly a great shift time, to be honest with you, especially if you got a family. And the nighttime crew was like, is like 20 hundred hours, so 8 p.m. to like 4 a.m. or whatever. They all have different things based on what's going on. If there's robberies happen at a certain time, then crew and like ATVs, when I, I was on ATV detail for like four years, maybe five, four and a half years, something like that. If we had parades, we had to switch, right? So we were utility units, so we would always switch our shifts. So when I um, had Honolulu lights, um, we've had like BLM rallies or anti-Trump rallies or anti-Obama rallies, um, Kamehameha Day Parade, all the different parades, the Honolulu Marathon. We would have to switch our shift for that whole week just so you're not messed up. You know, you don't want to work night, 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 daytime and go back to night. That throws you off. So you'd adjust your schedule. Crew's the same way. We're a utility unit. Okay. Any Big Island storytelling? Mahalo. Actually, Dave Rice wrote Mahaloha, which reminded me of that Mahalo, the Mahaloha burger. They used to set up a shop in Kaka'ako, like a pop-up. Man, that was a good burger. I got Big Island stories, yes. I got Big Island stories. Maybe I'll do a video about that. Um, it's my favorite place on earth. I applied to Parker Ranch when I was 24 years old. 
I just wanted to work on the farm for sure. Um, for me, the other two watches had more action and fun for me. Yeah, depends on if you're in the country. If you work in the country, no more action, first watch. But town and Waikiki, that's where all the action's at. Third watch has action too, but it's different because you got tons of traffic. You still got like thefts from the stores. You still got shopliftings. You get a lot of accidents, stuff like that. First watch, especially in Waikiki, you get all the fights, all the fun stuff. Straight out Aloha said, he ain't selling malasados. No, he's not. Um, Donald Lesky, just got home from three weeks in Oahu, looking at relocate to North, to North End. North Shore, you mean? Unless you live in Boston and you're going to move to the North End. Yeah, North Shore is beautiful, Donald. Jovan Lopez, yo, Doug, when you was working in Hawaii, did you ever find dead bodies in the beaches there? Yes. I remember one guy, one guy had been swimming. He died, and it was like early morning, like 6 a.m. or whatever, and he died. He must have been swimming and had a heart attack or whatever, and he was floating all in Moana, and he had been there probably hours and it was gross. The water was different around him. You could see the water different. And uh, my lieutenant at the time, she got there first and she had to go out there in her uniform. And dead bodies, they stink really bad, especially if they decomposed. And she had all that stuff all over her and she was all stink and she had to go home for hazard. She had to go wash her clothes, shower out, whatever. But that stuff happened all the time. Dead bodies on the beaches. Homeless people, older homeless people that would maybe die, nobody find them. That was gnarly. Had a lot of overdoses um, on the far, on the ever end of Alamoana before Kaka'ako. So that could get pretty gross. He said, Woot Woot Sherwoods was there. I learned how to swim with Nalo Jim Summer Fawn. Summer fun in Nalo Gym. Love Sherwoods. Shout out to Sherwoods. Dennis DeLeon says, Honolulu, I see them on Prospect. Yeah. Why all said, as a UH student, I saw a dead body of a co-ed stabbed by a jealous boyfriend on UH Ave. Students corner the guy in the UH quarry. Whew, that's heavy. I think I remember that story, you know. Tater Monkey, what's up? She says, Aloha, all everybody, give her a shout out. Um, Lisa Nagamine, you can order the book via Amazon or Apple Book for $9.99. Yeah, that's a good move, Apple Book. There's plenty of people have Apple. Just go get Apple Book and get the digital copy. It's all good, Tater Monkey. You missed the notification, but you're here now. Leanne Yu. Hi, Doug, from Kamuela, Hawaii. Uh-oh. That's shout-out number two from Kamuela. You got two people in Waimea that are, that are giving shots out. Thanks for coming through from Kamuela. Maybe I'll have some friends next time I go visit. Dennis DeLeon said he used to work... Shack Waikiki. I remember the shack. I used to work Fourth Watch, and I was in I was in Waikiki when the shack was going off. Remember, I had that one club above the shack called Diamonds or whatever. It was like all black and shiny chrome. Mao Leah Labar. You know, I was talking about you, Mao. I already talked about you today. You were the one that taught me Pablo Kalea. Believe it or not. It was early in my career, and I didn't know what I was doing. I just hit the road. Papa Kalea was my first shift. I had Sector 2, my first shift ever. There was an officer named Kyle Soimori. And Kyle Soimori, he died. And it was a real sad story. But he was the first dude that ever helped me. 
And then I ran into Mao, who was who's checking in on the chat. Shout out to this dude. Love you, bro. Glad to see you out here, man. And uh, he helped me out a lot. He taught me how to do a blood draw for my first 210, my first drunk driver. This guy had been drunk and hit somebody and hurt them really bad. And he refused. He was fighting officers and fighting the nurses. And we had to do a mandatory blood draw because somebody was hurt and he was drunk. The doctor told us we can smell the alcohol. And so they had to get a blood draw, a forced blood draw, because he said no. And it's tricky because that's like fourth, that's like Fourth Amendment stuff, search and seizure. So there's a lot of things you got to go through to follow the Constitution to get that one. Okay. Um, Doug, is there a specific time you'll be doing the video tomorrow? Hawaii time since who knows if my phone will notify me you are live. Yeah, Tater Monkey, tomorrow's going to be 6 p.m. Hawaii time. That's 1800 hours, 6 p.m. You can watch it. If you don't make it live, you still get the link. You can still watch them. But try to make it so that you can contribute. You know what I mean? You can comment and we ask questions, whatever. John Wu said, what are some rookie mistakes that made you in the beginning of your career? Oh, I should do a video on the mistakes I made. Bro. You, I could do a whole video. I can't get into that now. Hilarious. Hilarious. I rode with this dude named Galen Kineshi. And Galen was a hammer. And he acted like he hated me. He was my trainer. And he was so hardcore and would always flex. He always had me nervous. So I was, when I was new, I was making all kinds of mistakes. I classified a case one time as an assault four. And there's no such thing as an assault four. It's only third degree assault. And I pulled one for fourth degree assault because I was so nervous. <laughs> Doug never made mistakes. No, I'm telling you what. I was frustrating. I felt bad because my sergeant, Sanford Yu, he had patience though, man. He took care of me. I had good people. I had good people that took care of me. No complaints. Good people. Always helped me out. All right, Tater Monkey. I'll see you tomorrow. Come through. She said, the book's already got my head exploding. Cool. Don't read too far ahead. You're cheating. Wait for me. Are there rules when it comes to the howler siren? You definitely hear it from way farther, but it's not any more or less annoying. There's no rules, bro. Habit Lacrosse is asking about the siren. The truth is, man, you use it to be safe. You use it to be safe. You don't want to hit nobody. You want everybody to hear you. We all know what it's like to be jamming to the music. You jam into Kolohe Kai. Got the music up. You don't hear the sirens. You run through the light. Bam. Hit the ambulance. We call them a 1010. I've seen ambulances get run into. I've seen people get hurt inside the ambulance. Once I've seen an ambulance hit the ramp going up all in one to the second story. Mao, you remember this? Flying um, up the ramp. To the to Alamana, coming down Kamoku, coming Makai Kamoku, and hit the roof. It was too tall. Hit the roof, and the dude inside was like laying on the bed, getting CPR and and stuff. And like I don't know, I don't remember what. I don't think he died, but he got hurt, and a bunch of people got hurt, and it turned into a mess because had to bring other. Um, Ambulances to help the ambulances. Oh, it was a mess, bro. I don't know if the patient died. Okay, so, wow. I've been on 45 minutes and we never even get into it yet. So, I got to I gotta try to make, I gotta try to make some things happen. Z Tagovailoa, what's the book called? It's Sunny Skies, Shady Characters. 
by Jim Dooley. Go check him out. Trainer Kamano said, awesome. Shatigny left the apartment in 2019. That's right. So you know who I'm talking about, Craig. I remember you. You don't remember me? Now I remember you. I guess picture your face right now. You had dark hair. I don't want to tell people how handsome you were. Johnny, be good. Why'd you leave, leave HPD? It was a money move. It was like a calling. My babies are getting to that age. Their grandparents lived here. I had a good opportunity. Z Taco Vailo said, what division you was? I was in the ATV unit. I rode ATVs in Chinatown and through the parks at night in town. With the baddest dudes in the department. Shout out Moku. Shout out to the big brother, big homie Moku. Love that guy like a brother. Shout out Nikki. Shout out Ray. I think I got everybody on the chat. Okay, cool. Team Hawaii Promotions. What's up, y'all? Thanks for coming through. Okay. So, I don't have much time now. Um, but I talked earlier about that case where that dude was thrown off the side of that embankment up by the Judd Trail up Nu'uanupali. He was, I think he was shot, Moses Hui Hui. But just Malka of Morgan's Corner. Mao, you remember uh, Morgan's Corner, the hairpin on New Onapoli? That was out of D1 already. I'm pretty sure that was already D4. Right? When did D4 start? I think it was, oh, it might have been D5. You know how D5, like the Kalihi, it creeps over? Anyway, right off the New Onapoli. Um, around the hairpin turn. It's called Morgan's Corner. And on Morgan's Corner, this dude, Moses Hui Hui, he got shot in the head. They threw him out of the car and he rolled down and landed by Judd Trail. We found people hanging Judd Trail. Anybody, any of the HPD guys that are in here, um, anybody work town, we would find people, they'd commit suicide on those hiking trails. Tantless, Polly. That happened all the time, too. Um, so we got all these kind of stories. So what I did was, and we're going to talk about it more in the when we're reading the book. So go check out the Patreon if you want to get down with that. We start tomorrow, 6 p.m. Go um, sign up on Patreon. And we're going to go through these stories. I have notes and notes and notes and pages of it where we have stories that link all these organized crime murders and all these people are connected to each other and it basically starts from the beginning of the organized crime period in Hawaii which let's just call it the 60s I mean we know we had like prostitution and drugs coming after World War II but the organized crime aspect didn't really start until the 60s that's when it got heavy up until 1969 ish Oh, I guess I, sh I should say up through the 50s. So all the way up until 1960, the organized crime was all dispersed. It made up Chinese triads. The Japanese Yakuza had um, the Kung Pei, you know, the Korean, I think that word means hoodlum or gangster, um, and had some Samoan gangs. They basically all had their own niche in the market. They all had their own purpose. So... There were groups, there was this one group called the Japanese Bunch, and then there was the Korean Bunch. It's literally what they called them. There was like this time period where racism was still prevalent. And all the, all the groups were broken up by race. That's where all that came from. So you had the Samoans stuck together. They handled their own thing. A lot of, um, they had a lot of security. We, we, even way back when, in the 60s, for like game rooms and gambling, the triads, the Chinese triads, they would sell white heroin. What we call in law enforcement and in Honolulu, we call it white boy. So if you're ever out in the street and you hear somebody say they got white boy, white boy is white heroin. You cannot smoke white heroin. Um, but you see people snort them. And... Uh, 
So a lot of people, but white boy is expensive. So normally it's black tar, the stuff we get from Mexico. But China has white heroin. So the triads were in charge of the white heroin. Um, and the Koreans and the Japanese, the Yakuza, they were in charge of basically the gambling dens, the gambling houses. And they were all throughout Chinatown. That's the cool part about this is I know all these places like 11, like 1178 Mauna Kea, 1178 Mauna Kea, right across the street from Smith Baratania Park. There's that park on the corner called Smith Baratania. It's right across from, you know, that building where that, um, where that guy cut up that girl about two months ago, that sexual assault case. What's that building called? I forget what they call it. That super nice building in Chinatown, right by, I forget what they call that. Anyway, whatever that building is, just across Baratania from that, there's a park called Smith Baratania Park. And a bunch of homeless people. It goes from Baratania to Powahi. Well, across from that is, right now it's a ministry. It's like uh, that big Christian organization, Jan and... Oh, I forget what the name of that one is. You know the network, that Christian network. Praise network or something. I forget what they call it. Anyway, there's that like church ministry building right across the street. Well, back in the days, at 1178, there used to be Tom's Diner or something like that. Tom's Bar on the first floor. But on the second floor, it had on big like uh, conference room. And in that conference room, they were thrown down on their gambling and had a big gambling den. Well, like, I know these buildings. I know the entrances in and out because we would get calls to those and we'd always have to run either in the front or in the back, depending on if the gates were locked. If there's a suspect inside, we'd cover the back, cover the front. So I know all these entrances. And so when I'm reading these stories, it's like the dudes ran out the back, but the cops pulled up to the front and just missed them after he shot somebody. And that's where that... There's actually a mob boss who helped start the mob in like in like 1958. Um, George Chung. George Chung. That's what it was. There's this dude named George Chung. So this is where I'm going to start. And this is all I'm going to get through today. George Chung. Check this, check this out. This guy. He was known as the obituary burglar. Brother Kamu. Is it in Hawaii based book? Yes. It is in Hawaii. The book is about Hawaii. Hawaii Organized Crime, Brother Kamu. Okay, so oh, let me get to some of these quick. Pablo Kalea had one good Kung Fu instructor at Rec Center. Don't remember his name. I don't either. I never hung out with the Kung Fu instructor. I just remember I'll go visit the kids, watch them play basketball if I was on my shift. Um... Malia said, the new low-tone siren is supposed to be better. Okay. Rowdy said, what's the deal with the local crime orgs trying to keep the Hells Angels out of Hawaii? They failed. They failed. Because HA, Hawaii, has a chapter in EVA. So they failed. They failed in like 2015, you know. But the local boys kept out the Hells Angels for a long time. And then they patched over the wrecking machines. I think Wrecking Machines went to Hawaii, patched over, and came to Hawaii as HA. So HA is here now. And if anybody else knows more, I know people have been DMing me. I don't want to. I don't want to drop dimes. But people have been DMing me, talking about their knowledge of Hell's Angels in Hawaii. Um, what's it like working with other emergency services? Do you guys typically have a good relationship with them? Oh yeah. Yeah, we need those guys, like paramedics, like the EMTs. We need those dudes. They work so hard. Shout out to them. Fire. Ocean safety. Why oh said, heard Hells Angels has a small group here. My sources tell me. Yeah, they have a group. And they, they're not small anymore. They're growing. You can see them riding around. Fully patched. Not hangarounds, like fully patched Hells Angels. Sea town Kavika Dolan said, what's the name of the book? It's called Sunny Skies, Shady Characters, Kavika. You can go on Amazon, grab a digital copy or Apple Books. 
Moku Paiva, Hammer from Aya. Love Moku. If you know him, tell him I said what's up. He'll know me. We worked uh, on, a, on a unit together for the riot training. Spent a lot of time together. Um, Kai Lyons. I just looked and the patient did die, but after, yeah. That's the, you're talking about the EMT, the, when the 1010 crashed into the mall. Yeah, I was there that day. I was working that day. It was gnarly. Um, after the tunnel, you put his D4, yeah. Round top. Too much swag. 808, love you, brother Doug. Hope you find your way back home to the island one day. You solid. Thank you, sir. He threw the knuckles. Thanks for coming through, bro. I appreciate the encouragement, man. You guys are always really great to me. Real awesome. Super supportive. Rob Foster said, Rough Riders in the house. That's a shout out to his MC crew. Um, Waya O said, I was told even if the siren's on, you get into an accident, they will try to pin it on you as your fault. Oh, absolutely. But the honest, the truth is you trained in emergency driving. You spent three weeks of your life training race car track drifting eight nine ten braking like hazard driving steering under pressure um you train that way so that's why it's because you got training and if you got your sirens it's supposed to help but the truth is if you get in a car accident as a policeman if you hit the guy you probably was going too fast to be honest with you that's what it is dennis de Leon says nappy Pulawa. we're going to get into nappy um, Napi Pulawa is basically where the story ends of the old school gangsters in Hawaii before you get into like the Charlie Stevens time. And I knew Charlie Stevens' son. He used to live under the bridge, under the freeway on the Nu'uanu stream. He used to live there. And I talked to him a lot. He was like a Hanai son of Charlie Stevens um, who died in 1999. He caught like a 20-year sentence, 25-year sentence, but he only served six before he died. He was in Philadelphia or Pennsylvania, somewhere like that. Um, saw the Hells Angels, saw, saw a Hells Angels Hawaii guy at the airport wearing his colors, flying out to Seattle with a local girl. Yeah, H.A. is in Hawaii. And so is the cartel. I got a couple of people say they aren't already, but that would make sense except for I seen my, with my own eyes, guys. I've seen us pull Tommy guns. I'm talking full drum machine guns and sawed off shotguns and defaced pistols and a, and a car full of cartel members that didn't speak English with drugs. Plus, you guys might remember when we found a chopped up Mexican dude. All we had were pieces of his body with like skin fragments with tattoos. We were trying to identify him. There was rumors that the cartel had sent some guys out here for recon and they got chopped up and left out in the pig trails. So both the HA and the cartel were trying to come over around the same time. But for whatever reason, the local MC crew wasn't letting HA come out here. There was a little bit of beef. That This is from eyewitness account from... MC riders from Hawaii but then eventually somebody flew to Cali and patched over and brought HA out here so I know they're out here I might not have all the details but I know they're out here plus you see them they with their colors fully patched not hang arounds not prospects fully patched whole team of them Capital Place Pamela Perry that's what it's called right across from Capital Place was that Smith Britannia Park and across from Smith Britannia was is that church building now that used to be 1178 Mauna Kea or whatever and that's where um that George Chung who's like the godfather George Chung pardon my reference but he's like the Kamehameha of organized crime in the sense that this guy was the first one to unite all the different races they saw that it was bad for profits if there was racism in the underworld so they broke them down. They made them all unite. It doesn't mean they were all on the same team. But what happened is the dudes that brought in heroin, the dudes that brought in uh, prostitutes, the dudes that brought in all the gambling revenue, they all worked together. They had their own little faction, but they all worked together as one team. He essentially brought the organized crime together. That was George Chung. Chung. 
Malia said, why, oh, why, oh, I seen officers get in trouble for causing accidents. Not often, but it happens. Yes, it does happen. Char, Char Hung Soot. Yes. That's that. Uh, I remember that. Right by Char Hung Soot. River Church. It's, it's, it's not the, it's not the river of life, but north of the river of life. Get that real long building. Gotta bounce. Love you, Doug. Catch you tomorrow. All right, Ma. Peace, dude. Be safe. Good to see you, my man. This dude likes pony sneakers. He likes those pony sneakers. I remember that. Habit. Has anyone tried to jump an ocean to get away from you? Oh, yeah. That's that's on the regular. Every week, somebody jumped in the ocean to get away from me. I only went in after two of them. And then, I don't know if you remember, but the dude... Oh, too much swag. $10. Thanks for sharing all your experiences and knowledge for all of us locals to better understand Hawaii insides and outs. Love your channel. Keep it up. Aloha to your family. Man, thank you too much, swag. Dude, that's awesome, bro. Thank you so much. In the super chat. That's awesome, bro. I love you too, Mo. Thank you, bro. Thanks for coming through. Um, yeah, you know the officer, you, you know the guy that the officer made lick the urinal? That guy who licked the urinal jumped in the water and ran from me once, broke into a boat. Man, he was a dirtbag. And then... I'm not mistaken, I arrested him one more time. And we might have, I think he resisted, wouldn't get his hands out of his pockets, had a knife in his pocket. And I took him to jail for park closure and a warrant. I think he had like a $20,000 warrant. Bad news, that guy. Jap Soul says, uh, hi, I have Instagram. Sorry, I don't know what that means, but I have an Instagram. It's Doug Karenic. Go check me out. Um, you can send me a DM over there. Too much swag gateway. Moku, that's my neighborhood. Love Moku. Donald Lesky, the Filipinos always have my back when I'm there. They always have mad, max respect for the locals. I speak some Tagalog. Nice. Tagalog's not easy. The problem is you speak Tagalog and they all speak Ilocano or whatever. There's tons of languages, you know. CJB808. What's up, brother? Hey, what's up, CJ? Can't wait for the Larry Mayhouse stuff. Yeah, we'll get into that. It is... I wouldn't say a fact. I'm not sure it's proven because Sunny Sky Shady Characters came out 2015. Larry Mayhaw, I don't believe, died till 2016. But the rumor was that I heard, well, I'm sure we'll get into it, is that Jim Dooley didn't release this book until Larry Mayhaw passed. And you guys will find out why if you're a part of the book club because it talks about all these articles that this book was made up of, these are all investigative reporting that he tried to get to the editors and tried to get approved to make the Honolulu Advertiser in the paper. But they rejected him and said he couldn't write it. And he was under the impression that somebody was getting to him. And then he finds out later all the connections. So I don't want to, I don't want to get into too much, but that's where this book is going. I'll definitely let Moku know about your YouTube channel and let him know you said what's up and aloha. Thank you too much, Swag. 808 said which cartel? Mexican cartel. Yeah. I don't know which Mexican cartel because, you know, have plenty. I don't know. I don't know. And there's big ones and there's small ones. So maybe it wasn't the Zetas or all that stuff, but um, definitely had some cartel action. Boom Pow said they're all here. 
Why ya osa lere me how I heard treated his people good so loyalty prevails. Yeah. And he made it out clean. Lere me how. Um, because nothing was ever proven. It's just that a former gangster came out and ran for office and said Larry Mayho was the godfather of Hawaii organized crime. And he never, he never recovered from that, from the newspaper. MS-13, we had MS-13 in 2015. Um, we had a few neighborhoods that MS-13 was tagging and marking. And um, we had a couple people arrested for crimes. It was MS-13 that we sent back to Mexico. And um, a few of them we extradited to California. I remember that. So, yes, MS-13 was down. I hear they refunded the police in Minnesota and other cities are following suit. Yeah, I heard that too. Why? Oh, I don't know much about the Guardian Angels. I don't know. Bradakamu said, so do you only have a pat patrol in a certain area? Like, do they assign you a certain area as police? Yeah, Bradakamu. You get a beat. Inside your beat, there's five there's five beats that make up a sector, and there's four or five sectors in a district. So there's eight districts in Hawaii. They're adding, they're making a ninth, but it's like first through eight. D1 is town, D8 is Waianae. In each district, there is sectors. Sector one, two, three, and four. Sector one in town was basically Kiamoku, I'm sorry, Chinatown. Sector two was the mountain, everything above the freeway, all the way up Tantalus. Sector three was Kaka'ako. Sector four was from Punahou to Pi'ikoi. So sector one, two, three, four. In each of those sectors, there's a beat. And there's five beats, basically. So like district one, which is town, Sector four, which is Pequita Punahou, there would be one seven four, one seven five, one seven six, one seven eight, one eight zero, one seven nine, and one eight zero. So it's like five or six beats. One seven six was Keomoku to Pequita to Kaheka from Kapiolani up to Lunalilo, the freeway. That was 176. That was my first beat um, when I was in training. So I hope that answered your question. Donald Lesky II, $20 in the super chat. Thank you, Donald. I appreciate you, bro. It says, respect for your service, sir. Meant my family work out. So I appreciate your family for doing what they do. That's a hard job. And um, tell them I said thank you. Thank you, Donald. That's an awesome, that's an awesome thing, bro. Thank you for the gift. 20 bucks in the super chat. Man, you guys are awesome. Kai Lyon said, were you ever afraid of these higher level guys finding your info and coming after you and your family? Uh, yeah, but you know what? I'm tr I mean, the truth is you got to train as a policeman and you got to, you develop the eye, you develop that sense. It's like a sixth sense. We call it, we, we called it spidey sense and you cover your tracks and you, but a big thing is you got to, you got to treat people right. You got to have respect. Most of the time, nobody takes it. Nobody takes it serious. But yeah, I'd be lying if I said that it wasn't a thing. I'd be lying if I said I haven't gotten threats on my YouTube, on my social media. It happens. Um, but it is what it is. For seven years, I, I worked on island and dealt with the bad guys. Dealt with the organized crime guys. Dealt with the gangsters. I dealt with the Usos that were, you know, getting in trouble. I arrested tons of guys for murder and for rape and for kidnapping, for drugs and gambling. And if they were going to get me, they could have got me there. But you as a police officer, it's your responsibility to be ready and stay safe. So my kids were never seen with me at the station. I didn't post my address anywhere. We had protocols. My family had protocols. And when we went out, we had certain things that I would say. We had like code words. We have certain protocol in case something ever would have happened. And my job was to always stay on. Always scanning, always watching out. That never goes away and I'll do it for the rest of my life. 
Once you become a policeman, you cannot turn your back. You gotta have eyes in the back of your head, and that's what it is. It is what it is. You, you. That's what. That's the lifestyle you chose, and that'll never go away. Because I put some bad people away for a long time, and they're gonna get out one day. And some of them won't get out, but got family that don't like me because I put them in jail. So that's just a fact, and you gotta deal with it. But I'm ready. Put it that way. I'm ready to protect myself. So, um, it says, you jumped in, in full gear to chase the dude in the ocean. No, I took off my gear. I handed my gun, handed my all my gear, cuffs, everything. I handed them to my partner and went and got them. It didn't help that there was a shark at Honolulu Harbor. And um, right off Magic Island... He jumped in, tried to swim to the, you know, the docks on the Waikiki side of the Aloai and had a shark in the water. And it wasn't, somebody said, hey, the shark, we thought he was joking and we seen it and he's seen it. So he tried to stay out, but eventually he freaked out. He tried to swim into the surf and kept getting busted up on the rocks. And then eventually he washed up on shore. He was tired. But you got to walk into the water to get him. I mean, he's on the rocks, but he's still 15 feet out in like four feet of water or whatever. The Hells Angels Hawaii chapter has an Instagram. Yep, they have an Instagram. They post a lot of cool photos. Thanks for checking out Patreon Donaleski. We'll see you out there, man. It'd be an honor to have you come through the, come through the book with us. Pamela Perry said, Samuel Ingle is the guy who licked the toilet. You said it. I didn't say it. He's suing police departments left and right. I don't need him to sue somebody else. But yeah. Skyline Leather says, we have HA in my jurisdiction. They control the entire motor motorcycle scene here. No club can fly colors without their permission. You think what HA will be running the entire motorcycle scene in Hawaii? They are, my bro. They are already because they, you know, they took the baddest bike club in Hawaii and they patched them over. I don't, maybe not all of them, but that's how they came over. We had this group called the Wrecking Machines. But still got other guys like Koa and other groups, but it's only a matter of time, bro, if you ask me. Because everybody wants to be HA. That's where all the weight is. You know what I mean? HA is like the HPD of motorcycle communities. Where like these other guys are like harbors. They just don't have as big of a jurisdiction. You know what I mean? Madman says there's another book called The Good Father about Larry Mayhaw talking about the good stuff he did. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure The Good Father was written by Mayhaw and his family. Um... Are sectors like the mainland where you have to have someone else chase if they're out of your sector? No. But how's this? Cannot chase in Hawaii. How's that? Spineless, these guys. Spineless. The, it just drives me nuts. You know how many times had a guy that shot somebody and then we, we catch him in the stolen car, go on the radio, tell him what we got, Dude won't stop. The command comes over the radio says, you know, cancel the, cancel the pursuit. Drives me nuts. Plus, officers get in trouble if they pursue. If they do it, then they got to get investigated. Anybody who goes on the radio, even accidentally, had a beat partner who accidentally went on the radio during a pursuit. He didn't know there was a pursuit. He was up in a building with no service. Came down, pulled a report number during a pursuit. He got investigated. Because when the radio's on during a pursuit, if you go on the radio and transmit, they're going to investigate you. Peter Lau said, sadly, PD itself is just as corrupt. I think just as corrupt is an overstatement. I didn't know corrupt officers. 
and there's 2,000, over 2,000 when I worked there. I know some people made some mistakes. It's not corruption. And then I also know that corruption at the low levels can't be corruption. Like what people are using the term corruption for is not corruption. You have bad cops, just like you have bad bus drivers. It doesn't mean they're corrupt bus drivers. They got power too. The corruption ha happens at the top. Corruption is Louis K. Law. Corruption is Mike Miskey with Catherine K. Law. That's corruption. All the stuff that happened with the overtime, there's so much more to that story. How are you going to tell the officers they can work? Have a policy that says they can only work this much, but then approve when they apply to work it. And then you're going to get them in trouble? They got to apply for the overtime. You cannot just work overtime. That's approved. You're the ones that said you needed officers to go do this COVID stuff. They don't want to do it. Right? So they're like, the guys that needed money said, I'll work the shift. There's sign-up sheets. You got to approve them. And then you're going to bang the officers for going over your, your overtime rule? That's insane. That's not corruption. That's a mistake. That's not corruption. That's just bureaucracy. That's people that are not running the department well. You know what I mean? So there's a difference between corruption and people making mistakes. There's a difference between corruption and a bad cop. They can be a bad cop. That's not corruption. Corruption has to do with conspiracy. More than one person that's like ripping off the community and committing crimes. You can have a cop that's just a bad cop. Just like he'd be a bad teacher or bad whatever. Just not good at what he does. Or lazy. No more work ethic. Not honest. That happens. And they usually get fired. But you also get guys that just make mistakes, fall on hard times, just like anybody else, cannot handle it. And you get cops that can't handle the stress. Some things happen at work, life falls apart, they don't have counseling, they don't get any they don't get the help they need. And then people can only last so long. You guys feel me? That's a tough thing to talk about, but I mean it is what it is. It's a case by case basis. You know what I mean? So I don't like to say PD is as corrupt. I think that one's an overstatement. It's definitely not as corrupt as organized crime. But I get your point. I, I know what you're trying to say. I'm not taking you literally there. <sighs> Young Picasso said, are most of the street gangs on Hawaii connected to mainland or are they just replicated? Um... Most of them are not connected to the mainland. But the like Usos, most of them coming from prison on the mainland. San Francisco, you know, we Hawaii sends prisoners to the mainland for incarceration. And they come back, they're like institutionalized gangsters now. And they got connections. So now they're doing security at the game room. So that happens, yeah. But not like Bloods, Crips, Latin Counts, Latin Kings. Not You don't have any anything like that. They're not coming to Hawaii. But you do have like some Micronesian gangs that try to represent Bloods. Um, there's one group that was called Young Criminals, YG. It was a Micronesian gang in Chinatown out of Mayor Wright's. They tried to wrap blood. They were red and black. Too much swag. Want to be somebody? Got to walk around like somebody. With aloha and respect. Pili aloha. Says aloha dog. Aloha pili. Larry Mayhaw thanked your dad why all. That's a cool story. That's a cool story. You know, Larry Mayhaw, believe it or not, he was responsible for cleaning up crime in the 70s. He had a lot of heat because he did it in ways the the ends didn't justify the means, is what everybody thought. Because he would just, you know, 
coconut palm dudes. Just grab them by the hair, bust a jaw. But then crime like dipped in the 70s because of Larry Mayhaw. He was with the Metro Squad. But his, uh, they were hating on him for how he did it. Listen, I wish we were in a world where that worked. I know plenty of kids that just needed a good crack. Then they would straighten up. But parents ain't even allowed to spank them. So then the police got to handle them. What are we going to do? Take them to jail? The law says we can't even keep them for more than six hours. So you got to send them a couple of. Hands are tied behind our backs. Larry Mayhaw did do a lot of good in the 70s. He cleaned up crime. He may also have been the godfather of crime. Mahalo for the insight. Interesting stuff. Thanks, Team Hawaii Promotions. Appreciate you. And... Brada Kamu says, so do you only have patrol car in certain areas? Oh, I already asked that. I already answered that one. Brada Kamu said, ever did East Side of Oahu? Yep. Yep. Sure did. I used to, I lived there, so I used to do special duty over there for Ikaika, which was Osmos Utilities. Any new Mike Miske info? Oh, Wayao said, my dad said I did not have enough evidence against you. I won't reveal names here. I don't know what that means. You can DM me, whatever you're talking about. Sounds cool. Any new Mike Miske info? Nope. And we're waiting for July for the case to start. Have it lacrosse. Seems like too much liability to peruse or pursue. I'm sad how so happy people are nowadays. Yep. Um, Rob Foster. Rough Riders is Roosevelt High School mascot. Oh. Oh, you were talking about the school. Oh, you went to Roosevelt. Yeah, Roosevelt was on my was on my beat. I was at Roosevelt all the time. Rough Riders. My bad, Rob. I feel like an idiot. Of course, we were talking about motorcycle clubs, so I went right to it. Probably got other Rough Riders in the house right now. Kai Lyons, that overtime stuff is a bunch of BS. I agree. That was nonsense. They're trying to throw officers under the bus. How you gonna how you gonna throw officers under the bus for working overtime that you tell them they gotta work? And then you approve it. Dummies. That's the kind of nonsense I'm talking about. Brass, so scared and worried. Want to show the public that they're being transparent and catching officers. You're not catching anybody. You threw them under the bus. You you had them work that shift. You approved it. Bryant Paul said, corruption is institutionalized in the system top down. I agree. That's corruption. That's the difference. Why ya oh said when when younger and I did not know my biological parents were people gave me dirty looks because I look like my biological dad. He put a few people away when I found out who he who he was. Now I understand. Yeah. Habit Lacrosse said, which position lets you get paid the most with doing the least amount of work at HPD? I don't know, bro. I don't know about least amount of work. Least amount of work would be more like where you worked. So District 2, out North Shore, Kahuku, or District 4, out Kahuku, Haleiwa, And then Pamela Perry said, where are the Xanax bars coming from? Xanax bars? They're just coming from pain management. Dudes that are getting from Enti. That's the truth. They grab them from their Enties who don't need them anymore. Plus, you got guys shipping them over. California. 
They're coming in the mail. Bryant Paul said, that is so wrong on Mayhow. Nonsense. Totally wrong. Dennis DeLeon said, work for Governor Burns and Ariyoshi. Larry Mayhow was labeled by a news reporter. You're right. He was labeled by the news reporter that he was the godfather. And Larry Mayhow complained that he was never able to overcome that. And like I said, he was never put away for anything. Well, you'll see when we read the book, there's a little more to the story. Jam C. Aloha from Kula. Kula in Maui. Love that place. Nice and cold. You got to have a fireplace. You live Kula. I moved from Lahaina to Kula. I was watching some Axis deer the other morning. It's good hunting. I wonder, can you hunt Axis deer on Maui? God bless you, Jam C. Thanks for coming through, bro. Sean Knowles on, on TikTok said, you work District 8. I only worked District 8 when I did um, sweeps, when we were picking up like high bell fugitives. Turbo J says, thanks for the IG lives. Always always interesting. Thanks for coming through, man. Get some Aloha Kind Grinds on TikTok. You ever worked in Haula La Ie Kahuku? No. Oh, you know what? I did. We tr we, we did training out there. Training. ATV training, stuff like that. We we ATV trained everywhere. We used to go Mokulei'a. That was my favorite place to train, ride um, four-wheelers on the trails. Brother Kamu said, you ever work Kailua, Waimanalo, Kaniwe? Um, no, I never worked out there because I lived out there. I lived Kuhuku. I'm sorry, I lived um, Kahulu and I didn't want to work out District 4. So, Kai Lyons, they, then they wonder why they get almost 100 officers retiring a month. Yeah, so traditionally Hawaii has 100 officers that they have to hire and 100 officers that either resign or retire. So it's like 30, it's like three classes of 30 each. Waya'o said, not condoning corruption, but even a bad cop is going to try help out of compassion. Yeah, I mean, everybody, we all got good and we all got bad in us, yeah. For the most part. Kai Lyon says, brass, least amount of work and pointing fingers. Yeah, least amount of like patrol work. But they think that they're super important because they're like the minds behind the department. But uh, if you just support the policemen, you give them the tools they need, they'll go out there and they'll clean up the streets. But sometimes they do things, they bend to popular opinion so that the public feels safer, but isn't safer. There's some of that too, in my opinion. Habit of Crosses, what happened to the crab boat video? The lobster bowl video is still up. I just watched it. Too much swag 808 said parking meter cop if you lazy. There is no parking meter cops, you know. Parking meter, we have a parking um, division of city county of HPD, but they're not actually police officers. Acts 270904 says, Ar Ariyoshi was connected with the mob. My dad worked for the feds in the 80s. Yeah, I've been, I read about Ariyoshi. Jam C says, Shoots, my freezer has plenty of access deer. It's really tasty, but sort of like eating 10 year old shoe leather. <laughs> I heard access deer tastes good, though. All right, Jam. Be easy, bro. Your face says it all when you talk about brass. I'm sorry, sometimes I can't help it. But I, I do know some good brass. I know some good dudes that never forgot where they came from, that came up from the bottom like I did, and then made brass, and they didn't forget patrol. So shout out to those guys.
I would think helicopter pilot would have the chillest job and get paid a lot. They do get paid tons of money. Helicopter pilot makes like hundred something thousand. But um, he's on call. I knew a dude that tried to become helicopter pilot. There's only two spots, I think. That's probably the hardest spot in the whole department to get in, you know. Um, Wyatt. Wyatt Leong says, what was one of your O-ish moments as an officer? Dude, I had so many of those. Once I got sent to an alarm call up Tantless in this mansion, I show up, get to the house, the front door's open, everything is thrown all over the place, suitcases, like clothes everywhere like they trash the place and this is a mansion so alarms going off going off i can hear the alarm going off i draw my gun open door go on the radio so i got open door everybody starts heading down i'm clearing the house got my gun out police keep your hands up come out where i can see you nothing whole bottom floor Got guns, but I'm clearing every room. Stuff's all over the place. I get upstairs, clear every room. Got one room left, end of the hallway. Got my gun drawn. I walk down. The door's locked, or the door's closed, but open. So I squeeze up, which means I got another dude with me who told me he's ready to go in. Open the door, bust in the door. There's a girl blow drying her hair. Wearing a white t-shirt and socks. Blow drying her hair. Had her music playing. Could not hear the alarm going off. Nobody had broken in. They were just renting the house and threw their stuff all over the place. I mean, everything looked like it was a burglary. No one was answering. Alarms going off. I'm clearing the house. That was embarrassing to say the least. Had to pull up a report number. Type it up. I was in HPD for almost seven years, Bryant. Kai Lyon says, I was told by someone at HPD that there were a little over 100 officers quit in December and January due to some of the things going on in the apartment. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked. I heard there's a mass exodus right now. Everybody's leaving, taking their retirement. Because they, the longer you stay, the more you get in your retirement. But after 32 years, it doesn't matter how long you stay. So you got plenty of guys that are staying after 32 years that don't need to be there. They can just retire and make more money. And so... As soon as crazy stuff started happening with BLM and all these things, they just, they retired. It's not worth it for them anymore. Habit said, are you ever going to fish on the lobster boat again? I hope so. I, I, yeah, we got 11 lobsters that day. You can go watch our lobster video if you have, if you guys haven't already. I went lobster fishing with a, on a real lobster boat in Maine. Backdoor 206 said, free Jake, he bought the beat it self-defense. Yeah, I heard, um, had witnesses say that they were arguing and that something happened and all that good stuff. But I also see you've been writing that a lot. I know I, I follow you on Instagram, yeah? And um, you knew Jake. I saw that photo you posted with him. And there's this girl that knew him, that grew up with him, that she's on my YouTube. Her name's Hannah, I think. And she said she knew him. She said uh, he was a good dude, fell on some hard times with the wrong people and whatever. But the truth is, if it was self-defense, it'll come out in court. Habit said she'll make me mod already. Man, I don't know how to do that stuff. I'm just out here trying to hang out with you folks. Get some Aloha Kind Grind says, Aloha, brother Doug. Have a good night. Can't wait for the buck to start tomorrow. Can't wait, bro. I'll see you tomorrow. Brother Kamu says, I used to flip off the officers in Waimanalo, then patrol Waimanalo. <laughs> that patrol Waimanalo. That was in my younger days. It's all right. When you stopped, they had plenty of other guys doing it too that, that carry the torch. I left HPD in 2018. June 21st, 2018. All right, guys, I'm going to have to cut it off here. It's almost 1 a.m., and I got to wake up early in the morning. And I got work. But, man, that time flies when you're having fun hanging out with my people. 
Um, Acts 270904 said, any update on the Iolani football player that beat that girl at Capitol Place? Trial was supposed to be in February. I haven't heard anything yet. Probably got pushed back because of COVID. That's what they've all been doing. Um, but we'll see. I'll definitely do a video. All right, guys. Appreciate you. It was fun. It was a blast hanging out. Go on over to the Patreon. Sign up. You want to be part of the book club. If not, no worries. I'm going to keep doing videos for the public. I'm going to start. I'll do some more stuff on organized crime. We didn't get to everything I wanted to talk about today, but either way, it was a blast hanging out with you guys. Cannot believe all you guys hung out. Tons of you in here checked in in the beginning and stayed the entire hour 35 minutes we did hour 45 yesterday so this is starting to become like a pattern and i appreciate you guys your time is valuable you all got your own problems you all got your own things going on own jobs all that good stuff and you're hanging out with me you're hanging out with this crew so i appreciate you guys much love much aloha thank you guys for being there for me and for being so curious and interested in the stuff that i love to talk about and shed light on you guys have been gracious and just been great to me. So thank you so much. And um, I'll see you guys tomorrow if you're in the book club. And it'll probably be a couple days if you guys aren't. But I'll keep the videos coming. So thank you guys. Till next time. Aloha.